Okay, here we're looking at some confidence interval problems. The secret here is that we're going to use these three distributions and we're going to use R. I've kind of squished down R a little bit here just to preserve real estate on the screen. All right, so here's our situation. We've got a random sample of N measurements it was selected from a population and we know the population mean uh, the population standard deviation okay now that's pretty unusual really in real life you very seldom really know that but if we do then that changes what we're going to do down here because we'll we'll be able to use a z distribution instead of a t remember if you know the population standard deviation then this standard error is calculated as the sigma divided by the square root of n. If we don't know this, then we're forced to use the sample standard deviation as an estimate, and therefore we have to use t. But in this case, we'll be able to use z instead of t. So let's, uh, let's just work through a couple of these real quickly and, and see what's happening. Um, here's our situation. In this first case, uh, our n is 50. Okay, so we know this is 50. And uh, the mean that we get out of this is, a, is an 88.2. Okay, so that's a, the sample mean that we get over here. I don't know where it fits, but it's going to be somewhere over here, 88.2. And we're going to try and build a 95% uh, confidence interval. Okay, now here's what we know. See, we know this is a 15.7. Now that's unusual in real life to actually know the population standard deviation. But that means we're going to be able to use this to estimate the standard error. And so we'll be using a z-score instead of a t-score here. Okay. Since we're interested in a 95% confidence interval, then we need to have 5% out in the combination of this tail and this tail. That means that up in this tail up here, we've got to have half of 5%. That's 0 .0 0 0.025 up there and a 0 0.025 down here. That would mean that we'd have 95% uh, inside of here. So to find this Z value, we'll need to do the following with R. Okay? Because we're looking at the z value, we don't need to use a, a t value. We, we can use a, so let me do it this way. We need to find a, a q norm of 1 minus 0 0.025 in a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Single. Okay? That's going to be this z value up here. Okay, now if we, and, and we can do that, we can use the, the q norm instead of the qt because we know the population standard deviation. And admittedly an unusual situation, but, but that's the idea. That's how you decide whether you're going to be using this and and z scores or whether you're going to be using this and t scores it all depends on if you know the population standard deviation or not okay so what we really needed to do here let me call this a z value and uh, maybe an easy way to do that would just be to pull that up and uh, oh here's something that you ought to know by default uh, our considers the mean to be 0 and the standard deviation to be 1. So you can save yourself some typing when you're when you're looking for z-scores because you 
you don't have to say what the mean and standard deviation is. R assumes it's zero, mean is of zero and standard deviation of one, unless you tell it something else. Okay, so that's kind of handy. Uh, so we want to, to save that z-score. Go back and look at the video when we are doing the same thing with t's instead. And, <clears throat> okay, so there's our, our z-score. Um, our margin of error is going to be, oh, we need to find a standard error, right? Uh, the standard error is, is the standard deviation over here, and we're going to be able to find out what that is because we knew that this is 15.7 divided by the square root of, what was our sample size here, 50. Okay, so there's our standard error. Uh, we can find our margin of error now. Everything's put in place. The margin of error is going to be the number of standard deviations we need to to move away times that the number times what the the standard deviations are, what the standard error is. Okay, so there's our margin of error, and so now we can build our confidence interval: eighty-eight point two minus the margin of error, 88.2 plus the margin of error. So, so there's our, our lower bound right there. So let's copy that and put that in here. And there's our upper bound in this case. And put that in here. And let's check our answers. Wahoo! Okay, they're both, both correct. Okay, now the here here we're looking at somebody's work, and they were thinking that they needed to use a T test instead of a Z test. But the key is that in this case we knew. And I can highlight that. We knew the population standard deviation. So we can use Z, uh, Q norms instead of QTs uh, to find that, uh, to, to find our estimates. Okay, I hope that helps.